Hey everyone, it's Ellie Mae with Swift Creek Customs and I have a quick video. I have been doing some fun things, playing around with some drawing apps and so I wanted to share how you can use those drawings if you want to create your own handmade drawings to be used with the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software and eventually to be cut with your Caesar, Juliet or Romeo or if you are a Leonardo Design Studio Pro user, you can now export those designs as a SVG file. So you could use your own handmade elements in a design and be able to save that in other file formats. If you are using the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio Pro version of the software. So I'm going to switch camera views. I'm going to show you I will be using an iPad with the Procreate app but you can use the same techniques that I'm using no matter what drawing app that you're using on your device as long as you can export it as a JPEG or a PNG. Now I'm going to be exporting as a transparent PNG. Well, I'll show you how to do that. It's very, very simple. So take these tips and you can utilize that in any drawing app that you are currently using on your device because I know not everybody has an iPad or the Procreate app. If you do have an iPad and you can draw, I do recommend the Apple Pencil. It's much more reactive than any other of, of the third party brands. But if you do have uh, the iPad, but you don't have Procreate, it is a very fun app. It's very cost effective, very low cost to get into and to just play around. I will make this disclaimer. I am not an artist. I just doodle. I do not sell my designs. I am just playing around, but the more I play with it, the better I am getting at it. So let's take a look at how we can do this. I'll switch to the overhead so you can see my iPad Pro. Okay, so hopefully you can see this without too much of a glare, but this is um, Procreate. This is when I get into my, this is my gallery. So you can see that I've been doodling and playing with it. Nothing Caesar related, just doodles that I have done over time. But I'm going to um, come up here and you, with your iPad, you can use either your finger or your pencil if you have one. I'm going to press the plus button and then I'm just going to choose a canvas size. Now, something to keep in mind when you are creating your designs is think about your final project. If I were to create something like this, so let me choose this little flower here that I created. If I were to choose and make this say on a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas, you need to keep in mind the thickness of your lines if you're going to be creating an SVG file or a file that could be cut with a cutting machine. While the Caesar Juliet and Romeo do a fabulous job at precision cutting, you still need to keep in mind the thickness of your lines when you are going to create an SVG file the SVG is going to be scalable, which means it can be scaled down or it can be scaled up. Now, if you scale, when you do that, you're going to be changing the size of these lines. So if you design it super large, this one's on an eight by eight um, mat. If I were to shrink that down to a two by two, these lines are going to be extremely, um, very, very thin. And I might just take that as an example and show you at the very end, um, this is just a drawing I had done before, but it's something to keep in mind when you're choosing your um, mat size or when you're creating your design. Now, I'm not going to specifically go into more details on that, I, but I'm just going to choose a size here. Let's see, I have plenty of other sizes. If you want to make a new um, canvas, you can click this little plus sign and you can create and you can base it off of your um, width and height. Here I have pixels, but you can also change it. Right here you have your inches, centimeters, and millimeters. So you could make, um, let's just do a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, that's if you're making things for cardstock typically. And then pinching your fingers and moving your fingers in and out is how you can zoom. And really this just takes practice. So I'm just going to draw a very simple design here. So if I come in here, and another thing to keep in mind when you are drawing <clears throat> for a cutting machine in particular, 
you want a brush that is solid. You don't want a brush that has a gradient. Um, let's just pick this one right here for an example. If I come back on my mat, you can see here, this is like a distressed brush. So you don't want that because when you bring it into your software to trace the design, it's going to pick up all of those white areas. So it's not a solid color. So you're going to end up with a very, very distressed looking um, design. So you want to choose a brush and I'm just going to use Monoline because it is a default brush for Procreate. So I'm going to choose Monoline. On this left hand side over here is you your brush sizes. So you can increase your brush shot size. So here's an example and here's another example. So that is where you can keep in mind the size of your line widths when you go to create your design. Now a double tap is an undo, or you also have undo and redo over here. This little slider here is your opacity, which is not something I'm going to cover today. But I'm just going to draw a very simple leaf design. And I really like the Procreate app because I'm one that is, I tend to be a perfectionist or I am more critical of myself than I should be. So I can do a couple things here. If I don't like that, I can easily double tap it and I can erase it. So I can choose what I want to make that design. Now a couple other neat features that I think um, are helpful when you're drawing, especially if you are someone who is overcritical of yourself like I am. The Procreate app has some very fun features where if I draw a circle, if I hold down my pen tip, it's going to make that more of a smooth circle. And here, let me see if I can get this. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom. If I draw an oval and I hold it down, now it conforms to that perfect oval. So then I could bring that up and I could use it here. Or if I wanted to do it here, hold the pen down and it's going to make more of a perfect oval. So let's just go back here. That's an oval. And I'll just draw some leaves here. Again, I wanted to keep this very simple, but once I get started, I feel like I have to share more tips with you. Uh, Procreate's really fun. And this is just, since I drew it, it's going to be my original artwork. So I'm not worried about, you know, somebody claiming it, claiming I took their artwork. So I can just come in here Add some dimension in here, details to the design. And again, I am not an artist. I just dabble, I play. One other thing I'll show you, that's a little bit too even for me. Um, you can come in here, you have an eraser here at the top. So your eraser, your um, opacity is at the bottom, your brush size is at the top. And you can come in and you can erase. I'm going to increase that. So I don't like this one where it's at, but it was several undos back. So I could come in here, get close, and then bring this back out. And nope, nope, that's still too even for me. Um, Again, like I said, I can be overcritical of my work. And it really just takes practice. So then I can zoom in here even more, come in with my eraser, drop that down a little bit, and come in and clean this up if I want. And then once you once I do that, you can smooth out this line. Let's make this a little bit smaller now again however you want to do that so my brush is still selected I'm just gonna whoop too thin bump that back up and give that dimension here 
Another thing you can do that I'll just show real quickly is you can, that's the eraser, here are your layers. Layers are really awesome in that we're actually going to work with this, but you can bring in this layer here and add a new layer. And then I could draw, I can turn this one off too. Once you start down the Procreate Road, it's really hard not to continue. Um, but if I come in here, choose my brush, cancel that, I'm always doing that. Just wanna show you this. Let's draw a couple, whoop, Cole's offer. Okay, if I come in here and I have my layers, if I turn that other layer back on, you can see that it's, this is just an example of what I wanna do. Whatever layer is active is gonna be the one that your tool applies to. So if I were to want to, I'm actually going to duplicate this layer here. So I keep my original copy and then I just turned it off. So if I wanted to erase underneath this leaf here, I'm going to have my layer one active, choose my eraser, and I can come in and erase only the part on that layer. So that is a really cool technique. Similar to what Caesar showed in their pro video, which I can also link that. You can do this in the Leonardo Design Studio software. So that's just a for instance. Now I'm not gonna save this design as it is. But if you don't like something, you can come in here with a swipe to the left, I can delete that layer. Now I did make a duplicate, so I can actually delete that one as well. Now turn that layer back on. Now exporting is so easy. So what I'm gonna do is I personally want to export this as a transparent PNG. If you have that option, it can be better for tracing when you bring it into a software program. But you can trace in Leonardo Design Studio software in a JPEG or a PNG file, either one. So you play with that and see what works best for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going this background layer here, I'm going to turn that off. And you're not going to, it's gonna be hard to see on the screen, but it is there. And then I'm gonna come up here to the little wrench tool in the top, and I'm gonna choose Share. And you can choose to share in different ways. This one shares the image. And so it gives you the different options that you can share as. And under here, share layers, it gives you different options that you can share as, as well. So there's two different ways. Play with what your, with your app, what options you have. Personally, I come in here and I choose share layers and I choose PNG file because that sends any number of layers. Each layer that I have created is gonna be a separate image. So that's just what I have gotten into. And I did not name it, so that's going to be the name of the file. And then I'm simply going to send myself, so from me, and activate my keyboard, because that's how I prefer. And I'm going to send it to Swift Creek Customs. Double check my spelling, because I haven't sent it to this email before. And, whoops, I entered it in the wrong place. Select all, cut. That was my subject. Image, uh, leaf, send. Okay, it's sending it off. So you can choose to export it in several different ways here. Um, I just choose, I email it to myself because I don't have a Mac, but if you're on a Mac, you would have the option to airdrop it. So you could airdrop it to your Mac. You could put it into, let's see, Google Drive should be an option here. Send to, um, different places that you want to send it to. So I just use my Gmail, but you could send to iCloud, Drive, Google Drive, um, anywhere you want to save that to, and then we're going to move over to the computer and retrieve that file, and I'll show you how to use it in Leonardo Design Studio. Okay, now you are going to 
have saved that file. Wherever you sent that file, you want to grab it and save it to your computer. So I saved it from my email. I downloaded it from my email. I'm going to go to File Open. And here is the PNG file that I opened. Now, depending on the file type you saved at will determine the next steps that you get when you go to open this. So I'm going to show you one way you can do this, but there are going to be multiple ways that you can do it. Now you can notice here when I do this, it I move my mouse over top of it. It tells me it's a PNG file. It is the dimensions are 3600 by 3600. And that is determined by the size of my Procreate design mat. So you're going to notice this come in here. Remember, I drew that on a 12 by 12 um, artboard in Procreate. So you wanna keep that in mind when you are creating files. Size matters. So here, I'm going to choose that. I'm gonna choose open. Since it is a PNG file, it is a transparent PNG file, it's going to give me two options. I can choose print and cut or I can choose background image and I can work with either one of these. The steps next will determine which one you have chosen. I'm going to also change this to 300 DPI. It's going to open at that three and that's what I saved it at. So next, it's going to open and trace it as a print and cut. That is just fine. Usually I just click next all the way through. I let it do its thing. You can see those blue lines around my design. Again, a very solid brush is going to determine how it traces. If you are using a brush that has opacity on the edges of it, it is going to trace that. It's going to find that in that brush stroke. So next, next, and then it brings it in. So this is the size that it was created on. You can see my background, my cutting mat is a 12 by 12, and that looks almost exactly as my Procreate did. So what I'm simply gonna do is I'm going to decrease the size of this and bring it onto my mat because I told it I was opening as a print and cut. I do not have to do this as a print and cut. I can if I wanted to. If I go to the Send tab, go to Send, it is ready to do my printed artwork and it is ready to do my cutting contours artwork. If I do not want it to do a print and cut, I can come down here and uncheck print and cut job. And I am using the Leonardo Design Studio Pro version, which allows me to bring in printed images and then turn off the print and cut. Since it traced it, when I opened it, it still has cut lines. So if I come up here to the send tab, go to send, now you're going to see that I have two different cuts and I really only need one of them to cut. So if I come up here to the Dodger blue, that's exactly how it is going to cut. So I hope those tips have helped. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications if you wanna be notified of future content on this channel. Thanks for joining me. Have fun creating.